inside the storage jars were ancient texts which very quickly they came to realise that these were incredibly important. As well as a treasure trove of documents that we had never seen before. It's official. Beyond Cain and Abel's notorious spotlight in biblical narratives, Adam and Eve's lineage extends far beyond. Delve into the Book of Jubilees, where hidden chapters of humanity's inaugural family unfold. Picture discovering an age-old manuscript, revealing the untold stories of our earliest ancestors. Meet Azura, whose life intertwines with Abel, and then Seth, illustrating the complex family ties of antiquity. Join us as we dive into the Book of Jubilees, uncovering the dark, early tales of humanity and the terrible secrets of our ancient ancestors. Secrets from the Start – Adam, Eve, and Their Forgotten Family When people read the ancient pages of the Bible, they often focus on the well-known stories of Cain and Abel, the famous sons of Adam and Eve, leaving their other children in the shadows. This overlooks important parts of Genesis, chapters 5, verses 4 and 5, which hint at many more children, both sons and daughters, who didn't get as much attention in these sacred stories. These verses mention that after the birth of Seth, Adam had many children over 800 years, living up to 930 years in total. Yet, the stories of his daughters remain untold, hidden in the vast expanse of history. Venturing into the lesser-known Jewish traditions can reveal texts like the Book of Jubilees, offering a deeper dive into the tales of these overlooked figures. The Book of Jubilees, often considered an alternate version or B-side of Genesis, brings out stories and names that mainstream biblical texts might have considered too minor or even controversial to include. It's like discovering an ancient diary that shares gossip and secrets about the earliest human family, providing a richer picture of their lives. The Book of Jubilees takes readers on a journey back in time, introducing them to a world where divine messages and angelic beings play a central role in the unfolding of human history. This book categorizes history into periods called Jubilees, each spanning 49 years, and outlines a detailed timeline of events as told to Moses. Originating from the 2nd century BCE, this text enriches the traditional narratives by adding layers of depth and context that were perhaps overlooked or omitted from the canonical texts. The Book of Jubilees is often called by two other names, the Lesser Genesis or Leptogenesis. It's a very old text that holds a special place in the religious traditions of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church and Beta Israel, which are Ethiopian Jews. There, people refer to it as the Book of Division. Despite its importance to these groups, other major Christian denominations like the Eastern Orthodox, Catholic, and Protestant churches, as well as Jewish sects, do not include it in their official religious texts. However, its role in shaping religious history, especially through its thorough narration of events from the beginning of the world to the time of Moses, structured around periods called Jubilees, each lasting 49 years, is quite significant. The content of Jubilees is rich with information, including detailed stories and the names of Adam and Eve's daughters, such as Awan, Azura, and more, which aren't mentioned in the Bible's official texts. These extra details provide a fuller picture of the life of the earliest human families, shedding light on their experiences and the lessons in morality and spirituality that can be learned from them. This text was highly regarded and frequently referred to in the communities of early Christians and Jews. This is proven by its inclusion among the Dead Sea Scrolls and the fact that it was cited by early leaders of the Christian Church and Jewish scholars. Even though the Book of Jubilees isn't part of the officially recognized religious texts for many modern faith traditions, its influence on the development of religious thought, particularly in apocalyptic literature, is incredibly important. The fact that pieces of this text have been preserved 
especially in the Dead Sea Scrolls, underscores its value and impact on history and culture. The stories and information it offers, while not part of the official religious narratives, enrich our understanding of the early biblical characters and the times they lived in, offering a deeper insight into the early stages of biblical history and thought. This ancient text is not just a relic, but serves as a living bridge connecting modern readers with the complex web of beliefs, traditions, and narratives of ancient communities. It shows how sacred stories are not static, but evolve over time, reflecting the changing beliefs, questions, and challenges of the people who treasure them. For anyone curious about the roads less traveled in biblical history, the Book of Jubilees offers a unique exploration into the heart of ancient spiritual tradition, demonstrating how every story is an intersection of divine revelation and human history. The Book of Jubilees, affectionately known as Little Genesis, offers an expanded take on the stories of creation, Adam and Eve's downfall, and the early dramas of humanity, adding new details and perspectives to the familiar biblical tales. This intriguing text, dating back to 700 BCE, opens a window into a deeper and more complex narrative that predates even this ancient manuscript, the mystery of its origins and the debate over its authorship, with some attributing it to Moses, based on accounts of divine revelations received during his time on Mount Horeb, add layers of mystique to its study. This debate not only captivates those with a keen interest in the mystical aspects of religious history, but also underscores the broader discussions in biblical scholarship about the origins and interpretations of sacred texts. The Book of Jubilees proposes an alternative version of events where pivotal characters and stories, often overlooked in the canonical Bible, receive attention, suggesting a dynamic interplay between divine inspiration and human authorship. Similarly, the narratives surrounding Adam and Eve's lineage, particularly focusing on their less discussed daughters like Aklima, also known as Luluwa or Awan, invite us to explore the nuanced social and familial dynamics of early human history. These stories bridge the gap between canonical scriptures and the rich tapestry of ancient traditions, shedding light on the broader spectrum of human experiences and relationships that shaped early society. The mention of Adam and Eve's other sons and daughters in the Bible hints at a complex family structure and societal formation that extends beyond the primary narratives centered on Cain, Abel, and Seth. This broader family narrative raises intriguing questions about the societal norms and practices of early human communities, including the implications of sibling marriages for population growth in the absence of alternative human families. Exploring these ancient traditions offers a deeper understanding of humanity's spiritual heritage and the foundational narratives that have influenced our cultural and moral development. It challenges us to consider the fluidity of these stories and the ways in which various historical, cultural, and theological contexts have shaped them. Through the lens of texts like the Book of Jubilees and the stories of Adam and Eve's numerous descendants, we gain insights into the complexities of early human society and the enduring power of these ancient narratives to provoke thought, debate, and wonder. See how an old book adds new twists to known biblical tales, connecting lost stories to our spiritual past. The Forgotten Children of Eden Within the rich landscape of ancient Israelite heritage, the Book of Jubilees stood firm, showcasing a resilience that contrasted sharply with its peripheral recognition. This intriguing document, alongside the equally mysterious Book of Enoch, found a special place in the hearts of the early Christian community, even making its way into their diverse collection of sacred writings. Such inclusion serves as a powerful reminder not to dismiss the Book of Jubilees lightly, for it complements the wider biblical story, enriching well-known narratives with additional depth despite being classified as apocryphal. Venturing deeper into the thicket of ancient Semitic and Abrahamic lore reveals Avan, or perhaps Awan, who is traditionally seen as Adam and Eve's first daughter. Her name, resonating with meanings of strength or perhaps misdeed in the ancient Hebrew language, 
places her in an intriguing position within these stories. She was not only a daughter, but also the spouse of Cain, the same Cain known for his dark deed against his brother, and the mother to his children, including Enoch. Cain honored Enoch by naming a city after him, highlighting his efforts in city development after his exile. However, the story takes various turns, with Avon sometimes transforming into Kalima in different accounts, weaving a complex tapestry where fact and fiction intertwine, leaving us to wonder about the real story behind Cain's wife and sister. Azura steps out from the narrative's shadows as another enigmatic daughter, finding herself linked with Seth, the child given to Adam and Eve, as a form of divine solace after Abel's death. Seth's name, suggestive of replacement or compensation, symbolizes a new beginning and a heavenly gesture of comfort towards the mourning parents. Interestingly, Seth's descendants, especially highlighted through his connection with Azura, are celebrated for their devoutness, leading up to Noah, who played a critical role in the biblical story of the flood. Thus, Seth and Azura serve as crucial connectors in the sacred lineage, bridging the narrative from the dawn of creation to the pivotal moments of divine intervention and human perseverance. Despite the profound respect and importance attributed to these figures and their tales, there's an underlying layer of irony. Centuries later, we find ourselves piecing together the existence of these early personas from fragments of narratives once considered too provocative or peculiar for conventional scripture. The Book of Jubilees, along with its diverse cast, stands as a vivid illustration of the selective process that shapes religious texts over time. It reminds us that the formation of what becomes central or marginal in religious discourse is often influenced by considerations of authority, influence, and strategy rather than solely on theological grounds. This exploration into the Book of Jubilees and the broader context of biblical storytelling invites us to reflect on the intricate processes that define our spiritual heritage, offering a deeper appreciation for the multifaceted narratives that have shaped religious understanding across generations. Exploring the ancient world of religious stories takes us on a journey that shows how flexible and changing these stories can be. It's clear that people throughout history have shaped, added to, and sometimes even removed parts of these tales to better fit their times and beliefs. As we dig through history's layers, finding pieces of stories about Avon, Kalima, Azura, and others, we see that all stories, no matter how sacred they might seem, are influenced by those who tell them. The Book of Jubilees is a perfect example of this, showing us a complex network of stories that still capture our interest and spark debate today. The Book of Jubilees, also known as the Lesser Genesis, Little Genesis, or the Book of Division, is a fascinating ancient Jewish apocryphal text. This book, divided into 50 chapters and consisting of 1,341 verses, offers a detailed account of biblical history from creation up until the time of Moses. Unlike the canonical texts of Judaism and mainstream Christianity, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church and Beta Israel, Ethiopian Jews, recognize Jubilees as canonical, where it is known as the Book of Division. Despite its significance in these traditions, other Jewish denominations and Christian branches, such as the Eastern Orthodox, Catholic, and Protestant churches, consider it part of the pseudepigrapha, not accepting it as canonical scripture. The Book of Jubilees is structured around the concept of Jubilee periods, 49-year cycles, with history divided according to these segments. This structuring aligns with the biblical concept of the Jubilee year, emphasizing rest, debt forgiveness, and freedom for slaves every 50 years, which has profound symbolic significance in the text due to the number seven's importance in biblical numerology. One of the unique aspects of Jubilees is its detailing of lesser-known biblical narratives and figures, such as the names of Adam and Eve's daughters and specific classes of angels, enriching the biblical story with additional layers of interpretation and meaning. It delves into the nature of the Nephilim and provides interpretations and expansions on the laws and stories found in Genesis and Exodus. Scholars generally agree 
that the Book of Jubilees was likely written in the 2nd century BC by Pharisees, reflecting a period when Jewish religious thought was highly engaged with issues of law, calendar reform, and the role of Israel as God's covenant people. This text underscores the Mosaic Law's ancient origin and contributes to our understanding of Jewish laws and customs' historical roots. The discovery of Hebrew fragments among the Dead Sea Scrolls highlights the Book of Jubilee's importance in early Jewish religious life, especially among the Qumran community. Despite its historical and religious significance, debates about its canonicity and authorship have led to its exclusion from the biblical canon. These discussions center on the lack of early manuscripts in the original language, the timing of its writing, and theological considerations regarding its inclusion in sacred scripture. In its early days, the Book of Jubilees was well regarded within the Christian community, receiving mentions from significant religious figures and showing its impact on the development of religious thought. However, its journey through history has been uncertain until discoveries like the Dead Sea Scrolls shed light on its importance in ancient religious communities. Despite not being included in the religious texts of most Jewish and Christian groups today, the Book of Jubilees has deeply influenced how religious stories and theological concepts have been formed and discussed over time. The exclusion of Jubilees from the official religious canon has several explanations, including its creation outside of Israel, questionable authorship claims, and the introduction of ideas that didn't align with established religious teachings. Its focus on a solar calendar, distinct perspectives on spiritual beings, and insistence on separating Jewish people from others demonstrate theological viewpoints that diverged from mainstream Judaism and early Christian beliefs. Nevertheless, the Book of Jubilees offers invaluable insights into the beliefs and practices of the Second Temple period, acting as a connector between Old Testament stories and emerging Christian theology. It illuminates religious debates, early Jewish thinking, and ritual practices, enriching our comprehension of the religious landscape of the time. Scholars continue to study the Book of Jubilees, not only to understand its historical context, but also to see it as an early form of scriptural interpretation, demonstrating the ways ancient texts were examined, elaborated, and taught. Let's see how the first family's love stories changed history. Lost Tales of the First Families The Book of Jubilees dives into the complex relationships and family dynamics of early biblical figures, presenting a story that feels like it could belong in a drama-filled TV series about the earliest days of human history. This text takes a close look at how Azura, who was first married to Abel, becomes Seth's wife after Abel's death. This change in partners within the first family of the Bible shows how different their understanding of marriage was compared to today's standards. The Book of Jubilees carefully records the lives of these characters, organizing their major life events into a detailed timeline based on Jubilees, 49-year periods, and weeks. This approach gives a sense of divine organization to their complex and intertwined family histories. Enos, born from Azura and Seth's marriage, marries his sister Noam, keeping up the family tradition of marrying within the family. While this helped maintain the family line, it's a practice that would be seen quite differently by today's ethical standards. Enos is notable not just for his direct descent from Adam and Eve, but also for starting the practice of calling on God's name, indicating a significant moment of religious awakening among his people. This act stands out as a moment of clarity and devotion amidst the tangled web of their family's history. When looking at the story from a broader perspective, Adam and Eve's ability to have so many children seems almost unbelievable by today's standards. They are depicted as having a level of fertility that would certainly have set records if such records had existed back then. Bringing the discussion into more recent history, Valentina Vasiliev's record of having 69 children from 27 pregnancies in the 18th century provides a stark contrast to the biblical stories. Despite the impressive nature of her record, it still doesn't match the almost mythical fertility attributed to Adam and Eve. 
Valentina's story, supported by historical records, offers a rare glimpse into the life of someone who might come closest to matching the biblical account of human fertility. Though her story also raises questions about the realities of such a life during her time. Valentina's husband, Fyodor Vasiliev, also plays a role in this extraordinary tale of family growth, with a total of 87 children attributed to him, including those from a second wife. This family's story, while remarkable, has been met with skepticism and fascination, showcasing the complexities of human fertility and the challenges of historical record-keeping. For a deeper understanding of Valentina Vasiliev's life and the context of her record-breaking number of children, one might turn to resources like the Guinness World Records and various historical records available online, which provide further insights into this fascinating aspect of human history. Exploring the ancient tales and genealogies in biblical texts, especially when compared with modern understandings of family and reproduction, presents an intriguing look at humanity's attempt to trace its origins. The stories of figures like Azura, Enos, and Seth, nestled within the wider saga of Adam and Eve's family, unfold a complex narrative of the early days of human society, blending spiritual beliefs with the fundamentals of family life. These accounts, drawn from a combination of biblical scripture and texts considered apocryphal by some traditions, delve into the depth and richness of ancient lore surrounding human beginnings. Azura's role, as highlighted in the Book of Jubilees, stands out for illustrating the intricate relationships within the first families. As both a daughter of Adam and Eve and the wife of Seth, her story emphasizes the importance of familial ties in the proliferation of humanity during its formative years. The Book of Jubilees, which some faith traditions recognize as an important scriptural text, provides a detailed genealogy that showcases the interconnectedness of these primeval figures. Enos, the child of Seth and the grandchild of the first humans, Adam and Eve, is a crucial character in the stories of the early days of religion. This importance comes mainly from his contributions to the spiritual growth of people, as shown in different cultural and religious stories. He was born when his father, Seth, was 105 years old and lived an exceptionally long life, similar to his family members before him, dying at the age of 905. The story of his life and what he did is very important for understanding how the early human beings related to each other spiritually especially in terms of how they worshipped and called upon a higher power. The name Enos means mortal man in the Hebrew language, and it reflects the moment when humans first realized they would not live forever and began to think differently about their relationship with the gods or God. During the time Enos was alive, people started to actively reach out to the divine, marking the beginning of people gathering together to worship or perhaps the start of a movement towards believing in one God. This era is characterized by a renewal of faith, showing that people were once again finding their faith in God, especially as they started to use the name Yahshuai A to refer to God with great respect. However, this renewal of spirituality did not last forever, as the generations that followed fell into bad ways, which eventually led to the Great Flood. Enos's impact is not just limited to his own time, but also stretches into different cultural and religious backgrounds. For instance, in the Ethiopian Orthodox tradition, Enos is remembered for bringing the Ge'ez alphabet to people after receiving a message from God. This shows his role in keeping spiritual laws and teachings safe for future generations. He is celebrated as a devoted and good servant of God showing how his influence reaches into many cultures. In the texts of the Latter-day Saints, Enos is seen as a good and holy priest, who was present at the last blessing Adam gave to his descendants and who led his people to a land named after his son, Canaan. This highlights Enos's leadership and his commitment to his faith, showing his importance in religious stories outside of the Bible. The revival of spirituality during Enos's time gives us a look into how faith and dedication to God can come and go in societies, 
It shows the ongoing battle between staying connected to the divine and the mistakes humans make, a theme that is found in many religious stories. Through Enos's descendants, like Noah, we see how belief and goodness can continue through the ages, despite the many problems and bad times that come. These stories not only explore the dynamics of the earliest human societies, but also prompt contemplation on the foundational elements of family, faith, and morality. They highlight the enduring power of ancient narratives to influence contemporary understanding of human values and beliefs. For those interested in delving deeper into the lives of these figures and their significance in both biblical and apocryphal traditions, resources such as the Book of Jubilees and scholarly works by figures like Maimonides offer valuable insights. These texts and analyses provide a richer perspective on the spiritual and familial underpinnings of early human history, inviting readers to explore the depths of our shared heritage. Explore how ancient myths and today's science show we're all connected. The First Woman's DNA and Our Big Family In biblical stories and scientific discoveries, Eve stands out as the most amazing mother in history, with a story that might make you double take. Picture handling a family the size of a small town. According to old stories, Eve did this and lived up to 900 years, showing a level of having kids that we can't even get close to today. This makes Valentina Vasilyev's record of having 69 children seem small in comparison. Some stories suggest that Adam and Eve could have had many, many children, maybe even hundreds, this huge number of kids, seen as necessary for survival back then, gives us a glimpse into a time when having a large family was crucial. The Bible, especially in Genesis chapter 6 verse 1, mentions how Adam's family grew big, highlighting the birth of many daughters and making these ancient family stories feel more relatable. But there's more than just the number of kids. The stories also suggest Adam and Eve's children brought a lot of diversity into the world hinting at the idea that the first humans were of mixed race. This idea of diversity from the very start challenges and predates modern discussions about race and genetics. This is where the concept of mitochondrial Eve comes in, blending science with these ancient tales. This scientific theory, based on research from the late 20th century, shows that all people today are descended from one woman, known as mitochondrial Eve, who lived in Africa around 140,000 to 200,000 years ago. This finding supports the idea that all humans started from one place before spreading across the globe. Mitochondrial Eve's story is backed by the work of researchers Rebecca L. Kahn, Mark Stone King, and Alan Wilson, who found that everyone's mitochondrial DNA comes from this one woman. Their discovery highlights how all humans are connected tracing back to a single ancestor in Africa, which lines up with the out-of-Africa theory of human evolution. These insights into human history, both from ancient texts and modern science, offer a rich tapestry of how we understand our origins, showing the depth and diversity of the human family tree from its earliest days to now. Mitochondrial DNA is special because it gets passed down from mothers to their kids without changing, making it really useful for figuring out ancestry through the mother's line. The idea of mitochondrial Eve is about finding the most recent woman ancestor common to all people living today through their mother's side. But it doesn't mean she was the only woman around back then. Other women existed and had children. It's just that their maternal lines didn't make it to today. The story of mitochondrial Eve is quite fascinating. It tells us about a woman from whom all people living today are descended, but only through their mothers. This doesn't mean she was the only woman alive in her time or the very first woman ever. Instead, she's like the ultimate great-grandmother for everyone on Earth. The research into mitochondrial Eve has really helped us learn a lot about how humans have evolved, how our genes are passed down, and how people moved around the world over thousands of years. Mitochondrial DNA, or mtDNA for short, is something special because it's only passed down from mothers to their children. 
This includes both sons and daughters. But here's the catch. Only the daughters can pass it on again. This unique trait of mitochondrial DNA is why scientists can use it to trace back our family tree through our mothers, grandmothers, and so on. This method has given scientists some amazing insights into the history of human movement and development. The idea of mitochondrial Eve came about from studies that were done in the late 20th century. These studies looked at changes in mtDNA to figure out when this common ancestor of ours lived. Critics have had their say arguing about the way these studies were done and what they mean for understanding how humans evolved. But despite the debates, the idea of mitochondrial Eve has stood the test of time. More research has basically confirmed the early findings and helped us get a clearer picture of how diverse and complex human evolution really is. It turns out, humans aren't the only ones with a mitochondrial Eve. Scientists have found similar figures in other species, like sperm whales. This shows that mitochondrial DNA is a really useful tool for studying the history of life on Earth not just human history. However, trying to connect this scientific idea directly to the biblical Eve oversimplifies the complex story of human evolution and migration over millennia. Suggesting that all the variety in human races and ethnicities today comes from a single event described in the Bible misses the vast and intricate history of how humans have evolved and spread across the globe. This blend of ancient stories and modern genetic findings invites us to think critically and with a bit of humor about our quest to understand where we come from. It shows our deep interest in our origins and how we try to link ourselves to a common history, even when that means navigating the blurry line between scientific evidence and the stories of our faiths and cultures. It paints a picture of humanity's endless curiosity about its beginnings, our desire to see unity in our diversity, and our ongoing effort to weave together our understanding of human genesis in a way that touches on science, belief, and storytelling. What was Eve's life like with so many kids? Imagine being in that family. Like the story? Hit like and subscribe for more. Join us to discover more about our past and the links between old stories and new science.